talking about from Luke, the fifth chapter. You remember the points that we had there? We talked about how to possess the possessions that God has for you. In Luke, the fifth chapter, we read about how Jesus was ministering. And I'm repeating the message so it's, again it's in your mind. As Peter said, I am not going to be negligent in repeating these things to you, although you know them but so that it becomes real, it becomes rhema to you. Jesus was teaching the word of God by the, by the lake of Gennesaret. And as he was there, there were people crowding around him. And because it was difficult for him to preach and to be seen, he, he saw the fishermen over there where there were boats where the fishermen had left their boats in order to mend their nets. And he got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon Peter, and he said to him, may I use your boat? And this was the critical thing, a critical decision for Peter. Would he allow Jesus to use his boat? He had a choice in the matter. Life is choice driven. You have a choice as to whether you're going to use what you have for the glory of God or not. God will not force himself on any one of us. God will never make you do anything. You are a free creature doing whatever you want, anytime you want. He's not going to beat you upside the head if you sin. Go sin if you want to. You can do that. The end result of that will be death, but you have the choice to do whatever you want to do. Therein does he say from his word, he said, I set before you life and death. It is up to you. I give you opportunity to make a choice. He said, now choose life so that you might live. And he says, if you're willing and obedient, you can eat the best of the land. But if you persist and rebel against me, then you'll be devoured by the sword. He says, Peter, may I? use your boat. He says to each of you, Chris, may I use your talents? Betty, may I use your voice? Vicki, can I use your hands and, and your talent? Angela, can I use your, your administrative skills? He says to each of you, can I use what I have given you? Because who gave Peter his boat? God gave him his boat. Peter never would have been able to get that boat had not God given it to him. And see, God is such a wonderful God that he gives to us. And then he says, may I have access to what I've given to you. And you have full freedom to say, hell no, you can't have nothing. You can say whatever you want to say to him. Yeah, I'm grabbing your attention to wake you up. To understand, you have that, you have that authority in this life to cuss God if you want to. You remember the situation with Job? Did not his wife say to him, why don't you curse God and die? Why could she say that to him had there not already been people who had cursed God? There are people that curse God today. But praise God, in this house, we have a people who will give glory to God. But what you've got to learn to do is that in a world where people are free to cuss God, we as children of the light must be all the more eager to show this hope that we have within us. We should be more eager to announce Jesus from the rooftops. We shouldn't run in the closets and hide. We should preach Jesus. We should teach Jesus. We should share life with everyone that we have and understand that when we do that, our God works alongside of us. And as a result of him working alongside of us, what we learned last week, when Peter allowed Jesus to use his boat, Peter was watching and listening to Jesus. And as he listened to him, Jesus, when he had finished speaking, said, now put out into the deep, launch out into the deep for a catch. And Peter responded to him, he said, Lord, with wisdom. Peter responded with intellect. Peter responded with the knowledge that a man would have in his head. Peter responded with just plain common sense. Lord, we have toiled all night 
and we have caught nothing. And now you are telling us, you a preacher of all things, not a fisher, not a fisherman, telling us that we ought to launch out into the deep. Who are you to tell us? We haven't caught anything. We, this is our profession. Your profession is a preacher. What do you know? But nevertheless, because you said to let down the nets, I will let down the net. And so what did he do? He submitted to what Jesus told him to do. And he submitted and he had very little expectation. But we learned from that mistake that when you do what God tells you to do, you have expectation. You have expectation of what he will do. And when he let down the net, it says he caught such uh, uh, a net of fish that the net began to break. And then when they saw that this was happening, they called for the ships that were on the shore that did not allow, watch this, did not allow Jesus to use the boat. Jesus did not even ask them. But because there was such an overflow, they were able to share in their abundance with those who did not have. A lesson for us as children of the church that when we have blessings, we ought to be free to share because what we have received, we have received from God. And understand that what we receive from God, God is able to give back to us if we will do what he tells us to do with it. And they called the other boats out. And all the boats got all the fish and the boats were just full. And then it says that when they got back to the shore, Pete well recognized the fact that Peter recognized who he was sitting with. He said, hey, I'm a sinful man. You don't need to be around me. Peter looked at himself. Luke 5th chapter, we're still doing this. And I told you to lock this to memory. I told you to get in your mind. Because from that one series of words and verses, you can teach the whole Bible. You don't believe that. But it's only an example of the whole Bible. Like many other stories are examples of the whole Bible. It's just this one that the Lord told me to teach you from. Peter looked at his sinfulness and said, depart from me, Lord, because I'm a sinful man. I have nothing to do with you. And, and as they got back to the shore, they left their nets and they left their fish and they followed after Jesus. The greatest catch they'd ever had, they followed Jesus. And they started it all over again because the, the common sense thing is this, that once you do something for God and God rewards you, you just don't stop with what he gave you you begin to realize that he, Jesus himself is like, he is the goose that lays the golden egg. You go with him and he'll continue to give you more and more and more as you stay with him. But if you ever step away from him, you lose the blessings that he has to give you. So it says that final seven step is started all over again. Now, I had much I wanted to tell you about moving on to Peter listened to Jesus, but I can't do that today. I have to do something else that Holy Spirit told me to do that was only a moment of a thought just like that. And I said, I'll do it. And then when I did it, it took over all the message this morning. Holy Spirit decides he's gonna do what he wants to do. And I mean, it's just a little note. They can tell you back there, it wasn't nothing. It's only a, about a page and a fourth. And I got five pages I'm supposed to teach you. But Holy Spirit takes over. You know, I don't know, sometimes, now this is Jim Lowe talking, sometimes I wonder if I really want him to take over the service. Dancers take over. Kevin take over. What y'all need me for? Kevin be playing, um, y'all come to the altar. Ain't nobody told you to come. When I tell you to come, y'all don't come. He over there playing, he ain't doing nothing but playing. Y'all come to the altar. Dancers dancing. Folk get up and come to the altar. I didn't tell you to come to the altar. Why y'all come? Because Holy Spirit run this. This is his house. And Father God, you have authority anytime you want. I was just talking. I didn't mean what I said. <laughs> this your house. So, Peter allowed Jesus to use his boat, and as a result, he was blessed materially with what? Simple question. Fish. But he also was blessed with something else. And what was that thing that was spiritual? 
The presence of God, Jesus was in the boat with him. Now, therefore, from that, I am going to speak in terms of the greatest blessing of a servant. I want to start off with this. I got a word that I put up there. And I, this was just going to be my final word regarding making yourself of service to the kingdom of God. This is all I was going to do is this final word. And I was going to go to what Paul had to say about it. Let me say these words to you to summarize the whole message. Share what you have in the kingdom and it will be returned to you in great measure. Share what you have in the kingdom. Share what you have. Whatever you have. If you don't have it a little bit, share that. And whatever you share will be returned to you in great measure. Is that not what Peter did? What did Peter share? His boat. And what did he need and what did he get? He got back fish that he did not catch the night before. He got more than what he could have caught the night before. See, in this message, we learn that when you give to God something, whatever you give, God gives back to you what you need and more than what you need. You must lock in on that. It's the same thing that comes in Matthew 6, where he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added. Whatever you need, whatever you're going to need to wear, whatever you need to eat, it'll be given to you. People, something in our brain just, just goes against the grain of what God says that, that we've got to learn to give to him first. And if we will put him first, everything else will be taken care of. But something in us says that's not true. How many of you in here trust God? You say that, but you know, if you really did that, you'd be willing to trust him. You say, I trust you, but you know how God tests you? He tests you with what he's given you to see if you'll let go of what he gave you. And most of us don't want to let go of what he gave us. No, Lord, you gave me this. Why am I going to let go of it? You gave it. If you gave, why you give it to me? You know you want it back? That don't make no sense. I'm going to hold on to this. But he tells you give. And it shall be given unto you. A good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. And not only will God give to you, he'll make men give to you. That's what he says. But I'm going to tell you today, the greatest blessing of a servant is not money. It's not material possessions. It's not stuff that you think you need. It's something more than you ever imagined. Something that, that, that it, it, it's just totally astounding. Something that is absolutely amazing.